So these guys do a nice um, service for Canadian purchasers who need to get stuff from the Adafruits and the Spark Funds of the world. Um, they will help you with uh, doing some importing. And what did I get them to help me import? But a fade candy. I'm going to do a bit of playing with this to see what... Um, what all fun and games can be had with some NeoPixels. So the um, the Fade Candy is a, uh, it's basically, an, I think it's an AT Tiny um, um, microcontroller. Uh, let's just confirm that. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it uses a Freescale um, chip, but um, it, uh, is the same one that's on the uh, J, JRC or JRC AT Tiny, um, and you can still run the Fade Candy um, on it. But the um, the system is consists of this microcontroller, which is used to control the um, up to eight channels of uh, LEDs with a maximum of sixty four LEDs per strip, and then. Um, it also has a server component that you can um, either build or there's binaries available for um, Raspberry Pi, the uh, Windows and Mac OSs, or you can build it on Linux. And um, so there's that manages the serial communication between your uh, Fade Candy board um, and the uh, the host computer, which is either going to be a Mac or, Lin or um, Linux, Raspberry Pi, whatever, and um, a processing sketch or um, some sketch running Node.js or some something running, you know, it, it, if you want to write a library for it, I think there are libraries for Python, um, JavaScript, which uh, means uh, processing is easy to support as well. There's a bunch of them, anyways. You can look on the website. But so, so the basic um, the basic idea is that you have a sketch running on a host computer, or program running on a host computer that communicates with a serial um, uh, server, serial communication server that manages the communication with the Fade Candy, and then the Fade Candy controls the WS. Um, 2812s or 2811s, I believe both are supported. So yeah, that's what the Fade Candy is. And what problems is it trying to solve? Well, there's a couple of things that it's trying to solve. First of all, LEDs um, turn on and off um, according to um, a square wave with a particular duty cycle. One of the problems with that is that turning the LEDs on and off um, by linearly modifying the duty cycle. So if you have a, if you halve the duty cycle, that means you get half, half the brightness in terms of, um, linear brightness, but our eyes don't perceive, um, brightness that way. What, what they do is they have a nonlinear perception of brightness that looks something like this. If we graph perceived brightness versus duty cycle. Um, so if you have, this is the maximum brightness over here. So the duty cycle is 100%. If we go down to 50% duty cycle, if we go down to 50% duty cycle, that is not half brightness. And if we go down to 25% duty cycle, that is not 25% brightness. So what you do, what you need to do instead is have a mapping of duty cycle to um, brightness so that when you add these two curves together, you get your linear brightness. And one of the things that the Fade Candy does is implements this curve in, in such a way that um, it makes it easy to use. So then you can do things like you just, now you can talk about half brightness, quarter brightness, and you don't get this, um, this uh, jaggedness down in the uh, low brightness area of your LEDs. But having this comes at a price because 
you don't have a lot of leeway. You really only have eight bits of data in order to encode this curve with. So what ends up happening is you get a curve that is digitized something like this. Because you, you don't have enough bits. It's, it's a little better than that. So down in this area, you have to do something to make it visually smooth. And the thing that you, what you call that is dithering. And what dithering is, is introducing some noise in your transition area here. So we, um, we add some random noise to our signal. And adding that random noise has the effect visually of smoothing out the transitions from here to here. Uh, there's piles of stuff on the uh, on the internet that you can read about um, dithering and adding random uh, randomness to images. It's used in all sorts of things. Video games use it to make motion smooth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm not going to go too far into that. Just leave it at that that dithering is one of the things that is included in the libraries that you can use to um, control your NeoPixels or your WS 2812s um, through the Fade Candy, as well as this um, linearization of the brightness values relative to um, a simple input. So those are the two things that um, this fade candy is going to help us with. And so the next step is to maybe take a quick look at the block diagram, just because I was waving my hands earlier. So you might have some sort of sketch in maybe a processing server. And that sketch is going to communicate to a the fade candy server. And that Fade Candy server speaks USB, well, serial. It's a serial protocol over USB to um, your Fade Candy board. And that Fade Candy board is going to be connected to all of your various strings of LEDs. Something like that. So you have, like I said, up to um, uh, up to eight strings of 64. The uh, this is all running on the host computer, and this is serial protocol to your Fade Candy. The Fade Candy board gets power from the USB, and then you also have to uh, power your LEDs with um, plus 5 volts from some high current power source because these guys can draw a lot of current if you got them full blast and way more current than the Fade Candy board can support. So you always have to power your... L well, you don't always. You should... Powering, if you're going to be using a lot of them, powering them from a separate power supply that can deliver the amount of current that you're going to be needing. So this is, that could be, it could be a lot, depending on how big your um, LED string is. Like if you want to light up a billboard, that's a lot of current. If all you're doing is you've got a couple of them, you might be able, you can easily get away with powering them off of your your fake candy board. But, anyways, uh, that's the basics of the uh, the block diagram for how this thing is supposed to work. Um, a couple of things that I need to do: I need to build a fade candy server so that I can put it on my I put it on my uh, my Linux host, um, and then um, start playing with some of the um, demo sketches in processing once I've got that Fade Candy server built and installed. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll talk a bit too about these um, these w, uh, WS 2812s themselves just so that we can understand a bit better what this board is trying to accomplish. And that 
has got to do with the timing of how these LEDs get turned on and off. So, if somebody were to take the data sheet from uh, these uh, the World Semiconductor guys and try and decipher it, um, that's an impressive task because it's a little difficult to read the uh, the data sheet. I, I found it um, it a little tricky to figure out exactly what it was that they were trying to do here, but after a little digging. I was able to figure out the following. The, um, the way you control these WS2812s is through a serial protocol that um, looks like, like this. Say you have three LEDs in a string. You send three 24-bit values separated by a um, reset code. Each of those is being sent down, the, then you send uh, the next LED is gonna, so the first LED is gonna strip one of those off and then send the remaining two down the line. And then the second LED is gonna strip one off and send the re remaining 24-bit um, value down the line, so on and so forth. So if you have a bunch of them, like maybe you have 35, 30, uh, sorry, 64. It starts out with 64 24-bit values, then a reset code, which tells the, um, the first LED that it's gotten all of the data. And then that LED will send the next um, 63 of those down to the next um, LED on the chain and it will um, wait for a reset code, and then it will send the remaining um, 62, and so on and so forth. So this is how they set up a string of them. Notice we've got ground and VCC, um, and that's all at five volts, the VCC. We also need to have a pull-up resistor for, or sorry, VCC is getting pulled up to 5 volts with some filtering. We've got D out and D in. So your, your host computer is sending data. I can't, can't believe they wrote their symbol this way. Inputs should be on one side. Outputs should be on the other. VCC should be up here and ground should be down here. But, so... Data comes in, data goes out. Data comes in, data goes out. And then all of the other connections are identical. You've got filtering on your, um, on your VCC, which would be the, um, the pin that is going to be controlling your microcontroller. Uh, VDD as well is controlling your microcontroller. Well, the, I mean, each of these NeoPixel or these WS2812s have a microcontroller in them. So this is data comes in, data goes out. Data comes in, data goes out, all the way down the line. And so, how do you transmit bits? It's a little bit complicated. It uses what's called a non-return to zero method of uh, transmitting data. So the reference line is around here. So it goes high and then it goes low. But low is, you know, this is swinging. Um, this doesn't have to be... This doesn't have to be zero. This can be some negative voltage, and this can be some positive voltage. All, all you're looking for is high and low values. And we can look at the data sheet. But anyways, so to send a zero, you send a short high and a long low. To send a one, you send a long high and a short low. And then the reset code is, is here. And this has to be at least 50 microseconds for a reset code. To send a zero, you have to add, um, you, have, you send a zero high plus a zero low. So that's uh, 35, 0.35 microseconds and then 0.8 microseconds plus or minus 150 nanoseconds. So that's the, um, that's the error bar you've got for that. To send a, um, a one bit, you send a long high of seven microseconds and a short low. Of 0.6 microseconds. 
So that means that on average, you are taking approximately 1.25 microseconds to send a bit. Um, on average. And then you have to add 50 microseconds for the error bar, or sorry, for the, um, for the reset. So what does that mean in terms of timing? How much time do you have for your sketch in order to do things? So let's do a quick calculation of that. Say we want to have 512 LEDs in a string. And that means that we have to send 512 messages, or 512 data blocks that look like this. 24-bit data blocks where, where did I put that? There it is. Where a 24-bit data block looks like this, with the first eight bits being green, the next eight bits being red, and then the final eight bits being blue. So we send it in G, R, B, order. So how long does it take us to send one of these? Well, it takes us 24 bits times 1.25 microseconds on average, right? Now, um, then we have to add our 50 microsecond um, reset uh, word at the end and that will tell us how long it ten it it takes us to send one let's call it a frame of data um, so uh, when you think about frames it's like pictures in a moving picture so that's going to be one state that the LEDs are going to uh, one perceptual well, not, I was going to say individually perceptible, but it's not. It's one frame in our um, in our display is going to take this long. And so what does that work out to be? So that's 15,410 microseconds, which is 15.4 milliseconds. That's a long time. If we wanted to have... 60 frames per second, can we actually get that? That 60 frames per second, that works out to 0 0.01666 seconds per frame, or 16.67, let's call it, microseconds per frame. So right away, we don't have a lot of time to um, do anything in between sending frames. We've only got one, what is that, uh, one point, um, one three microseconds between frames to do any, any um, computation. So we have to figure out some way of... Uh, either doing these computations fast, if we want to compute frames to get a 60 frame per second frame rate, or um, accept a lower frame rate in order to give ourselves more time in our, in our programming in order to um, come up with whatever we're, we're doing. Okay, so the um, Feed Candy um, server has been built and installed. Um, I have to figure out um, some permissions um, settings for, for Ubuntu to figure it out, but um, it looks really nice. I mean, it, it doesn't really show up well on the, um, on, the, on the video, but it's really smooth. Like, if, maybe if we put a piece of paper over top of it to kind of diffuse the, the brightness, it might help. I don't know. Yeah, it sort of washes out on the on the screen, so I don't know. But uh, it's got a very nice, like, really, really nice feel to it. Like, 
it would have taken me a year to come up with all of the various tricks and tips and doodads that would have that Mike could put in there. And uh, she did a fantastic job. Holy smokes. Um, truly makes it easy to use. The, the list of different um, programming languages is huge. I mean, I mean, really huge. So, for example, C++, um, C Sharp, Go, HTML, Java, um, Node.js, um, Perl, Processing, Python. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's remarkable. So it's almost like anything that you wanted to use. Perl. Perl? Really? Anyways, um, there it is. So yeah, um, now I've got to try and figure out how to define an array for those and then play a little bit around with that and et cetera, yada, and maybe now interface a, um, a, a motion sensor so that it can, when the motion sensor moves, it creates some feedback on the display. And yeah, this is the, the, uh, the wearables project that I'm currently working on. So yeah, a little bit of progress there. So the library can produce I think, some really gorgeous uh, changes in color. It's amazing. So there's some examples of um, some random things like clouds, cloud simulations that uh, you can try. And it, uh, it really is quite amazing. Um, I don't know. It's just pretty to look at. Okay, so the function call or method LED strip in the um, library OPC, oh, uh, open pixel command, I forget. Anyways, um, each LED strip um, is 64 pixels wide. And then you tell the the library, how many LEDs you have to represent those 64 pixels. And then you di distribute those um, LEDs across your display in processing. This is a processing, how do you do a processing sketch? And then for, for each row, you create, or each pin of your uh, fade candy, which you generally would correspond to either a row or some block. If you've like taken eight and making a zigzag shape, you can um, you can lay them out that way. And then you tell the um, sketch where the what you're going to do on that display. Now it could be directly accessing the pixels through some pro program, or it could be interactive with a um, like a mouse pointer so this is moving a image around you know see me seriously <laughs> so this is moving a dot on the screen that corresponds to that pixel array that ten, you know, I have something wrong with these LEDs. I don't know what that is, because I can override it by going into the corners. So something, something fishy is happening up there. Don't know what it is, but yeah. So the um, the library works by taking a 64 um, uh, pixel long strip and mapping it to however many LEDs you have in that strip. quite an effect. I love it actually. <laughs> 